Well, hello, hello. How you doing? How you doing? This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast. This is the S. Anthony Thomas, and this is episode number 315, number 315. How are you doing? How are you doing, you bastards? Oh, my goodness. You know, uh, I visited my hometown of Philadelphia, hanging out there, and uh, what happens? You, you would figure that there's still would be in a, a good place. The Eagles won the Super Bowl. The Sixers are doing well. They're in the playoffs. The Flyers are in the playoffs. The Phillies, uh, <clears throat> moving on. <laughs> Just kidding. They're doing all right. Um, at least they are now. But, but the, but the big story now in Philly is the, is the, is the two black guys that got arrested for being in a subway and not ordering anything. Now, the story's been changing back and forth. Oh, maybe they were asked to leave, but they weren't asked to leave. But maybe they, maybe they were asked to leave. leave. Maybe they weren't asked to leave, but it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Everybody knows. And I was a, in the 90s, I was a Starbucks guy when I lived in L.A. And I used to go to Starbucks all the time and wait for people. And then my friends would show up and then we'd, we'd drink our coffee and all of that kind of stuff. And nobody bothered me, you know. But obviously, but in that particular area, there were a whole lot of people of color. And a whole lot of, you know, it was a very, very mixed area. So, you know, it was not, it was not a really that big of a deal. But in this particular location in my hometown of Philadelphia, these two guys got arrested for, you know, I guess they say loitering. Here's the thing about those signs. If you go to, if you go to most stores, what you see is you'll see a sign that says, you know, you can seat. And I don't know about Starbucks. I, mean, I haven't been to Starbucks in a long time, but I've, I've been to McDonald's where they say seating limit 30 minutes and they have those signs up there. But the thing is, no one ever enforces the seating limit in those places. Right. Under normal circumstances, the person goes up to the counter, they buy their food and you don't even. And who sits in McDonald's for a half an hour to eat? Nobody. I've gone, I've seen McDonald's where you see a bunch of old dudes just sitting there drinking coffee and hanging out and you, you go about your business. You come back two hours later and those same old guys are still sitting there. And that was because the dining room in this particular McDonald's was not that full. And these old guys weren't causing problems. And in fact, a lot of times these old guys, you know, their friends would come and meet them and then more people would buy food, but they were definitely there longer than the 30 minutes. And the only reason they have the no loitering signs and the only reason they have the seating signs where they say you can only be here for 25 minutes or 20 minutes is to give the business the opportunity to throw your ass out if they want to. And I think that's probably what happened at Starbucks. He probably didn't. Well, look at these two guys. They're probably suspicious. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please, please. Two people. (laughs) And the police come and drag the guys out. I've been there before. I know what it's like to go places and be. You know, I don't know if they were the only black guys in the store, but I know what it's like to be the only black guy in the store, the only black guy in a supermarket. The only sometimes I'm driving around. I'm thinking I'm the only brother in the damn city. I've been to places where I felt that way. I know what it's like to go into a place and have all eyes on you. You know, you're walking around the store and it's not even the, you know, not only do you have the damn uh, security guards suspiciously walking around. Right. You have everybody else kind of looking at you. You know, as if I'm going to just go down. All right. Finally, I got 200 white people alone with me in the supermarket. And I'm going to kick every last one of your asses and take all your money. And then I'm going to go home and get it on with your daughters. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's not what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? But it becomes really distressing when you're in those places and you get that treatment and you're sitting there going, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to accuse anybody of something before anything happens. I don't want to be one of those guys that accuses people when they didn't do anything. I'm not going to be that guy. Damn it. I'm going to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I want somebody to give people to give me the benefit of the doubt. So I'm going to give them the benefit, benefit of the doubt. And I go to this location and I'm trying to order some food. And this has happened in many cities, in many states, in many places. And it's annoying as hell, but Unfortunately, you have to kind of get used to it. I go in and I'm just looking at the menu, just minding my business, looking at the menu. It's an extensive menu. So I'm going, oh, I I didn't expect it to be such an extensive menu. I'm thinking burgers, fries, chicken, whatever. And this is one of those places, you know, those places where they try to be exotic with the menu. They add weird things that are hamburgers and weird concoctions and that kind of thing. And I'm looking at this menu and I'm thinking, this is great. Uh, you know, I'll be able to, you know, create something pretty unique, something I haven't had before, something I haven't had in a while. So I'm looking at the menu and decide maybe I want to put this on and that on. And everybody's kind of looking at me and looking at me. And the lady behind the counter is looking at me and the customers are looking at me and the people are in the back there frying the food and cooking the food and putting together the food are looking at me. 
One guy almost cuts his whole wrist off. Why? Because he wasn't looking at his hands. He was looking at me. Okay. You get in line to order your food and there's people behind you, right? And they were normally having that conversation and they realize that you're in line in front of them and all of a sudden they're having conversation. Well, and while they're having conversation, what are they doing? They're looking at me and the people in front of me, they don't even know that I'm back there. They don't know that I'm standing behind it, but they're talking to each other. And then they realize that I'm there and now they're looking at me. So the people behind me are looking at me. The people in front of me are looking at me. The lady behind the counter is looking at me. The people that are cooking the food are looking at me. And that guy that cut his hands off looking at me, he cut off his other hand and now he's on unemployment because, well, you can't make sandwiches when you chopped off both your hands what a dummy he should have looked at the sandwich and just glanced at me so now I'm walking up to the counter and the lady is she's discussing what they're going to get she's giving everybody the sing songy thing as they're trying to order their food and hey, how, you, how you guys doing what do you want to order well, uh, we, well I'd like to have just a classic cheeseburger my wife she'd like to have come on Bill I, I, we, we always have cheeseburgers I would like to have a hamburger. Well, how is that much different? Well, it doesn't have cheese on it. I mean, you might as well have cheese. It's not like it costs that much. What are you going to th- Excuse me. Just because we've been married all this time. I'm tired of you ordering for me. We're not a newlywed couple. You're always trying to order for me. You're always trying to boss me around. I want a hamburger, damn it. And I don't want any cheese on it because I don't want cheese. All right. What are we going to do? I'm going to go over here with the number and waiting for our food. Okay. Well, you just go do that. I mean, just, you just, you need to go over there and you need to think. Okay. Okay, honey, now that he's gone, I really didn't want cheese in my hamburger, so make mine a cheeseburger. I just didn't want him to think that it was, I just didn't want him to know that he was, bo- he was the boss of me because he's always so bossy. I just wanted to make, I want my, I want a cheeseburger, but I don't want him to know that it's a cheeseburger. I'm going to go over there now, so baby, just say it's a cheeseburger. Okay, man, okay, man, thank you. And the next person comes up, hey, what are you guys doing today? It's going to be a fun day at Suki Bookies, and you're going to love the drinks, because that's what everybody thinks. And, you know, all that crap rhymes. And you're going to love our burgers, something, something, urger, because it rhymes with burger. I can't remember exactly what she said. Shut up, punks. And everybody's getting all this sing-songy stuff. You like ice cream? Everybody screams for ice cream. You want some sauce? And because it's the boss. It's being, and all of that stupid crap. Right? And I walk up there, and she's like, you dig it? How can I help you, sir? Oh, I would like a, uh, I would like a cheeseburger because of something, something urger. So you want a cheeseburger? Mm-hmm. Would you like it cooked? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I want my cheeseburger cooked. Would you like the cheese? Would you like us to put the cheese on? Would you like to put cheese on yourself? Well, you know, I, mean? I, I would, I would like you guys to put the cheese on. <sighs> Being difficult. Not, what? Nothing. Uh, what else would you like? Uh, I'd like a coke. Oh. Would you like ice in it? I'm mm, sure. Would you like a... Yes, I would like you guys to put the ice in it. Shh, lazy. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> right? Give me a hard time. And then I'm stepped to the side with my number. And I'm standing there waiting next to the couple fighting about the cheese on the cheeseburger. Thought you didn't like cheese. Well, maybe I want a cheese in it. You probably just told the girl to give you some cheese after I left because you thought I'm being bossy. Oh, so you think, it, so you think everything's all about you? Huh? 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 And I walk next to them and all of a sudden they stop arguing they're looking at me and they, 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 I'm, I'm trying to i'll be honest with you i was a little disappointed because this was one of the dumbest arguments i had ever heard in my life they're arguing about cheese on a cheeseburger and i was hoping that they'd continue to argue because i was going to take some of their dialogue and add it to this podcast which is what i did anyway <laughs> but just not as much as i'd like to because they were too busy looking at me um i'm like hey what's going on hey what's going on hey, what's going on um do you think the act guy Blay is Angerous Day? Oh, nay. He looks like one of the nice ones, eh? He speaks so articulate, eh? So maybe he won't beat us up in the parking lot, eh? I'm looking over there. I'm like, I, I watched the Three Stooges when I was a kid, too, you two dumb bastards. I should beat y'all up just for that. He's looking at us angry, eh? Oh, no, eh? Oh, crap, eh? Let's talk to him, eh? So he'll think of us as friends, eh? So we won't get attacked, eh? When we go to our car, eh? Hey, buddy, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, man? Yeah. Nice uh weather we're having, eh, right? Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh my wife. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, miss? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, great, yeah. All right. Um... Uh, 
And I'm, and I'm looking at them going, oh, Jesus Christ. So I just kind of walk. I kind of take a couple steps away from them. And the people, and like I said, the guys back there making the sandwiches and the food and everything are kind of staring at me the whole time. You know, they're like, Archway the act guy, Blay. Uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's, 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 we, we don't get many act guy blays in our restaurant, eh? So let's cook his food fast, day, eh, So there won't be no trouble, eh? And I'm going, what is with these people with the pig Latin? Do white people speak pig Latin when black people are around? Is that where it came from? Uh, is, is that what they did when the Three Stooges? The Three Stooges were, were doing the pig Latin because there was some black, maybe the guy shooting that episode of the Three Stooges were black. He was behind the camera. They're like, let's make, make up a language so the black guy behind the camera doesn't know what we're talking about. Maybe that's what that stupid alphabet song was about, huh? B A B B B B I B K B I B O B O B K B I B O B U B O B K B I B O B O. What if I? What happens if you play that backwards? Let me B A B. Let me play this backwards. There's a black guy right here. Oh my God, I'm feeling fear. Oh my God, when you play it backwards, it's racist. I just is some bullshit. Okay, that didn't. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I love the Three Stooges. Let me get back to what I was talking about. So I'm standing there and they're looking at me and looking at me and looking at me, man. And, and then I, I and, and, and it, was, it was like the whole place was kind of like, kind of, kind of shut down. Even the, the volume of the, of people talking kind of shut down. You know that murmur you get? <laughs> but when they realized I was there, it was like, <laughs> everybody, like I'm trying to steal their conversations, right? And then I get my food. Right. And I walk out and I'm looking at the people and they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and they're looking at me. And I walk out and I take a couple of steps and I walk away. And it was like there was some uh, trees by the window. I'm not like little bushes. And I walked away to where I couldn't be seen. Then I really quickly walked back and looked at the window and everybody was back to their festive mood. <laughs> right. Now, that's that, that kind of thing that most people would pick up on. But when it happens to you again and again and again and again, it is annoying, right? It's almost like somebody's giving a gift to other people and then showing you the gift and not letting you have it, right? So imagine if you were a kid on Christmas time and your sister came downstairs, right? And your parents go, oh, Megan, here you go. Here's that dollhouse and double townhouse and quadruple townhouse you always wanted. Thanks, Dad and Mom. Thanks. And then your brother goes down and says, hey, Toby, check this out. Here's a double motorcycle, quadruple motorcycle and six puppies that you wanted. Uh, hi, hi, there you go. Hey. Right. And then you come downstairs. Oh, this is going to be great. She got the quadruple dog house. He got the motorcycle and the dog. Oh, man, this is going to be great. My gift is going to be slamming. All right. Uh, third kid. Listen, uh, here's a card from the dollar store that says Merry Christmas. And here's a coupon to a store you're too young to get to by yourself that expires tomorrow. So, uh, technically you did get a gift. Uh, could, would you mind going in the other room while the kids we like actually play the play games? You can watch them play games over there, but, uh, not, don't come over to play with them. Now that sounds ridiculous, but isn't that basically the same thing that happened to me in that store? Right? Isn't that kind of what happened to those dudes at Starbucks? Everybody else is sitting at Starbucks. They're sitting there chilling, enjoying their time, right? They probably had the, hey, you know, and they walk in, all they want to do is sit down and wait for their friend, basically giving business to the business. And they get arrested and have to spend a night in jail or whatever amount of time they had in jail. Even if it was four minutes in jail, that's way more than enough for committing no offense. So I can relate to it. I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like. And like I said, I know what it feels like from recent experience in many, many cases. Now, I know that Starbucks apologize and I know everybody's outraged by Starbucks as they should be. But let's be honest. This is not a local Starbucks problem. I wouldn't you know, this is a problem that we have pretty universally because i've been a lot of places in my 49 almost 50 years on the planet a whole lot of places and i get that in a lot of places this is a societal problem this is a bigger problem than one corporation in one location in one city this happens everywhere my friends and everybody that's outraged right now Who's going to protest outside of the stores? Who's going to write something on social media? Who's going to talk about how awful it is? You know how it stops. It stops when the people inside the store don't, you know, say something. 
and say something on a regular basis. It stops when the businesses stop allowing customers. I mean, not customers, but employees to get away with this kind of crap. It stops when we stop lying about each other and on, on cable news and online and on the radio and any other kind of media. It stops. It, that's where it stops when we stop doing that. And everybody says it'll happen in time. Yeah, but you only got enough. You only got a certain amount of time on the planet. You get your 90, then you're gone. So why should I have to spend so much of my 90 dealing with this crap? So let's cut this crap out. All right. So if somebody wants to sit in the store for a couple seconds looking at the menu, if they're waiting for somebody trying to give you some business, you shut the heck up and let them chill. You don't have to go this far. Most people are pretty damn good, I've come to find. Granted, there's some people that are a piece of crap, but most people are pretty good. Now, the funny thing about it is that story uh, that blew up in the news was mostly about, uh, you know, a business or someone who works in the business being a big pain in the ass. But I'll be honest with you. Sometimes it's not the store that's a pain in the ass. Sometimes it's a customer that's a pain in the ass. Because recently I went to a Subway sandwich shop. And by the way, this obviously isn't a Starbucks commercial, nor is it a Subway commercial. This just happened to be the establishment. And so I go into the joint and I'm trying to give me a little veg, little salad action. Right. And there's a guy that walks in behind me. And sometimes you got to be really suspicious with the overly happy guy. You know, the guy that comes walking in. Hey, everybody, I'm here. Oh, I love this place. This place is the greatest. Oh, oh, Subway, Subway, Subway. Hey, my man, you remember me, right? I'd be in here before I was in here last time. When he was here last time and you were here last time and I was here last time. And sometimes in time, them and ha <laughs> Yeah, but you you weren't here working and you weren't working. It was the other guy that was working there, not you, but it was the other guy, right? Because it was another guy who's here. You're here now, but the other guy was here. The other guy's my friend, right? So if he's my friend, I guess that means you're my friend, okay? All righty, righty, righty. Now, it's time for me to order my sandwich, right? I would like to get double this and a triple that and some double cheese on that and some sauce on that and this on that, put a couple of that, heat it up, and this and that and this, that, that, and and the guy starts making the sandwich. Little does he know, about halfway through making the sandwich, he already took those, you know, they had those little paper things at Subway where they take it and they flip it upside down and take the meat out because they have it all portioned out. So basically, he flips it out, boom, boom, he's going to make the foot long thing, Right. Because I know what it's like when you go in the, you know, and he goes there and he orders the sandwich, right? And when the guy's almost done making the damn sandwich, he's actually getting to the point where you put the uh, the toppings on, lettuce and all that kind of stuff. That's when the guy goes, oh, uh, him. Uh, by the way, like like I said, uh, normally when I come in here, it's not you, it's the other guy. And the other guy's my friend, right? And uh, my friend always lets me have sandwiches for free. Yeah, you know. Now. What 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 guy who runs a fast food place where the sandwiches are somewhere in the six to seven dollar range routinely gives out sandwiches for free? I don't know anyone like that. Never met that person. Never, 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 never. Okay. So I, as the customer standing next to this jackass, know he's lying his ass off. The guy behind the counter. Oh, I forgot to tell you this. <clears throat> The guy he was talking to that he was telling that the other people that weren't there at the time were his friends. Uh, this was the actual owner of the establishment. He owned several subways. He just happened to be working here right now because the other employees hadn't gotten there yet. So now he's lying to the owner and the owner's looking at him like, listen, no one gave you sandwiches for free. Come on, man. They give me the sandwich for free. The other guy was here. You're not here. And you, how you going to tell me what didn't happen, right? The other guy was here because the, I am the owner of this business and the people you're talking about who gave you the sandwiches for free, they work for me. Well, you better get with your employees. I did not finish. Let me finish, please. They work for me and they're my children. My children would not give sandwiches for free. Because they know we don't do that. Oh, uh, well, uh, hell, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, listen to me. I don't mind helping people out if they're a dollar short or something like that. But you lied to me. You come into the store and you lie. 
Okay, now what if the people working for me were not my relatives? What if they were employees that I did not know so well? What if they were new employees and I believed you? Then I would think that this person has stolen from me and I would be forced to fire them. So your need to have a sandwich for free would have costed someone working his ass off to lose his job. You are not an honorable man. I would like you to leave. Come on, man. I mean, come on, man. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I need you to leave now. Okay, man. I'm going to leave. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this, this place ain't nothing but a bunch of bleep. And you ain't nothing but a bleep. And you, you can kiss my bleep, mother bleep. So now the guy's heading towards the door. The guy finishes my sandwich, takes the other guy's thing, finishes up the sandwich, wraps it up, and takes it into the back. I guess he's going to give it to somebody or eat it himself. And then the guy that's supposed to leave does not leave. Now he comes back up to the counter and starts complaining to me, right? And the funny thing about it was, you know, if he, like I said, if he was, the funny, funny thing about it was if he had, if he was just like a dollar short, even if he was like two, a couple of dollars short and he was ordering the sandwich next to me and he was like, oh, damn, man, I don't have enough. I would have said, no, man, don't worry about it, man. It was a two dollars. I got you. I would have done that. If he'd have walked up to me and said, look, man, I really want to get the, the thing there. You know, I, you know, I would have gave it a look, look, I would like, look, what's the, I would have said to the owner, look, man, what's the cheapest thing you got here? Well, you can have the, the you can have a blah, blah, blah for this amount. I said, you know what? What the hell? Uh, hook him up. I'll take, I got you. Right? So now this bastard is, he's walking out the store. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then he turns right back around and comes up to me. Right. And I'm trying to and I have this habit of when I whenever whatever money in my wallet is in is in order, like ones, five, ten, twenties. So I'm putting the money back in order. In my wallet. I didn't have a lot of money because I, mean, I don't carry money just in general, you know. And so he, so now the guy's walking up to me and he's like, man, you believe this guy? He go hook me. Man, my friend. My, and I, I'm not even going to reiterate what he said because it was a, it was even more bull crap, Right. And, and as it turns out, when I'm looking at the guy, I had seen this guy before and he's a flim flam guy. He's not like a, a guy that actually is down on his luck and needs the bread. Cause even if in that situation, I would have hooked him up, would at least give him a couple bucks, let him, you know, get a couple bucks from somebody else, whatever. But I knew he was a flim flam man. I'd seen him before. Hey, man, this is some bull, man. This guy ain't nothing, man. He ain't nothing but a punk and a chump and a punk, man. He, man, he ain't nobody. He ain't nobody. Man, give you. And now he's looking in my wallet. Yo, man, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Are you, I'm much your sandwich cost, man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It was like, it was like five bucks. Yeah, man. Five dollars, man. You know, yeah. You got a ten in there, though, right? You know, you got a ten in there. You got a ten. And another five. You got a five right there, man. You get, you get, you get. And he's getting closer to me. And I'm looking at the guy like, you don't look in another man's wallet while standing within a foot and a, like a foot of him. That's what I'm thinking. I'm looking at the guy. This guy looking at my wallet. I mean, this 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 is like this is like somebody like if you're at the urinal, somebody like staring at your junk, like not just taking a peek at your junk, but literally like, getting down and looking at it, like I would just wouldn't let you know right now. I'm staring directly at your junk. He's like, I'm like, what is? I'm like, man, dude, get out of here. Well, 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 I mean, you don't look in another dude's wallet, man. You know how dangerous that is. You know what I'm saying? If I if I actually thought if I actually thought of you as a physical threat, do you know what I would do to you right now? Uh, I said, I would take this pencil off this counter right now and I'm going to jam it right in your throat. You don't walk up to somebody else and you don't start leaning, trying to lean on him and start looking into another man's wallet, brother. Uh, uh, and then the guy comes back, oh, look, did I not tell you to leave? Now you are harassing my customers. And he comes from behind the counter, gets one of those old timeies. Oh, it looks like a kind of bat they give you as a souvenir back when they were dumb enough to give souvenir bats to people. That's how old it looked. And he comes from up behind the counter. Hey, that serious, man. It is that serious. And then he chases the guy out. I am so sorry that you got harassed by the, this person right there. Who did you, cause you, you come in here before, right? Yeah, I'm in here sometimes. You, you, my, you, you know my sons, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Are you, are you as Anthony? Yeah. Oh, you were the Oh, they told me about you. You're a funny man. You're the one that did. And then he did some stuff. He talked about some stuff that I told his son. Oh, yes, my son do, do, tells me about you. You're a very funny man. You know what? He tells me you come and you're a good customer. He tells me you're a nice person. Let me ask you a question. Would you like that sandwich that I made for the other, they, they made the, because of the liar? And I said, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want it. <laughs> I would feel bad taking the sandwich because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to do that. Cause you know, and, you know, and he goes, come on, 
I was going to throw it away. Why throw it away when I can give it to you? And I said, you know what? Okay. And I took the sandwich. He said, okay, you take care. And I walk out of the store. So now the guy is hiding behind a trash can and he sees me and he sees the sandwich and he's looking at me like this mother sucker here was, was going to whoop my ass for for leaning on him and trying to get too close to him and start looking in his wallet as if I was going to rob him. And now he's got the sandwich I would have had, you know, but and the guy's just going to give him the sandwich. He could have gave me the sandwich. That's some bull, man. I don't even believe and there was a, and he's looking at me like, oh man, and there was a part of me that wanted to give him the sandwich. It's like, you know what? I know he's a flim flam guy, but I mean, nobody's a flim flam guy if they're rich. You know, maybe I should just give this dude the sandwich, you know, and I, and I, and I had the sandwich in my hand and I was looking at the guy and I was like, ah, maybe I should just get this guy the sandwich. And I look back into the, the window and the guy looks at me and he gives me a look in the, he looks at me and he looks at me and he looks in the direction of the trash can and he now sees the guy and he looks at me and he looks in the direction of the guy and he looks at me and he looks in the direction of the guy and then he puts his finger up and waves it as, as if to say, no, no, no. So I didn't give the guy the sandwich. I got in my car and I drove away. And, and then I felt guilty about it, but I have to be honest with you. Self-preservation, man. Self-preservation. Because I'm not going to piss off the guy at the sandwich shop for some other guy. F you. I know that's the bad, bad thing to do. All right. I'm sorry. You know, I would have given the guy the money, but he started looking into my wallet and getting kind of threatening. Not like he was going to, I'm going to kick, you know, the guy, have you ever been in a bad neighborhood? And I don't know how many of you have, you know, that the question is the thing that happens right before somebody pulls a knife out or busts you in the head. Hey man, you got the time. That's a nice watch. You got there. Where you get it? I got it from crack. You wake up. Where's my watch? That's what happened. So he had that kind of groove. So I had to let him know to back up off him because he had to move. He had to look on his face as if he was going to give like, Hey, you got you got a five and then like he's going to like grab my wallet or stick his hand and try to grab one of my, one of my bills and run out the door. You know, as it turns out, I don't feel guilty at all. F that bastard. He was going to try to rob me. Shot. You know what I should have done? I actually gave the sandwich to somebody else. I didn't want it. I gave it. To, I forgot who I gave it to. It was a relative. I said, here, take that, man. Was it? And I told him the story. He's like, oh, cool. I'll take it. I don't give a crap what the story is. I'll eat the sandwich. I should drive back. You know what I should do? I should go back to my relative's house if he hadn't eaten that sandwich. Take that sandwich. Drive around the area till I see that dude again. Jump out the car and say, here's that sandwich, man. Oh, thanks a lot. Then pimp slap the crap out of him. Knock him down. Step on his chest. Eat the sandwich while he's on the ground going, that's what you get bitch and then get back in my car and drive home <laughs> that's actually worse than not giving him the sandwich isn't it uh, oh now i'm feeling bad <sighs> should i give him a sandwich i mean i, I was i really was going to give him the sandwich but when i saw the guy in the window looking at me and waving like no 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 i was really like you know what i better not do that i mean normally i i do what i want but i mean Every one, a few times a month, I go to that sandwich place and I built up a lot of goodwill there and I don't want to piss that guy off. Not for somebody I don't know. Hell no. I mean, sorry, man. You know, like, like hey, look, did, uh, during the course of that week, I'm pretty sure that I went to a coffee shop a bunch of times and I gave, there's a dude that sits outside the coffee shop and every time I go in there and I buy myself a coffee, I always get that guy a co- I actually spend more money on that homeless guy in front of the coffee shop. And I spent on myself because I just went in. No, I got green. Actually, I don't get. I got the green tea, and I bought a green tea for myself. Then I bought that guy a small coffee and a damn donut, which is about five cents more than I spent on myself. Wait a second. No, I'm glad I didn't get that bastard the sandwich. I did enough work for people, and that guy actually was down on his luck, and I knew he was down on his luck, and he was not a flim flam man. So flim flam man, f you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I thought about that. I don't feel guilty at all. Yeah. You know, I don't feel guilty at all. Shoot. The only thing I do feel guilty of, you ever have bad thoughts and you just, you just know that the thoughts are, those thoughts should just stay in your head and not come out. And in this case, they did stay in my head and not come out because, you know, at that same place as I was pulling up before this whole incident happened, there was a, I saw a police officer. It was the same police officer that I saw at the donut shop I was talking about where I gave the, the guy that's down on his luck to get him a coffee and a donut. And it is a, is a police officer lady, a black lady. And this is, I don't, this is, should not be a sexist thought because women feel the same way. But you ever see a person that is so good looking and hot and all of that, that you, whatever job you have, whatever job you have, or they have, you think they're too good looking to do the job. 
Now, that's a bad thing. I, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to make sure that I, that I preface this with the fact that I've seen women do that, too. I saw a lady. This guy was a post office worker. Right. This guy was delivering mail. And we're sitting on the porch and it was one of, and, and the lady and the guy pulls up. And this guy was like, if Brad Pitt was standing next to them, Denzel Washington and Brad Pitt at their best were standing in front of this guy. A woman would go, hey, Brad, get your punk ass out the way. Denzel, move it. Come here, you. And she, cause she goes, I don't know mail. I'm telling you right now. I don't know why he's delivering mail with that face and that body. I'm telling you right now. Cause if I was rich, trust me, the only place he would be delivering is to me and the only box he'd be putting his mail in is my box. Cause he could put his mail in my box any damn day. He could deliver all up in this. Okay. He can come and deliver to me in rain and sleet and snow. And in fact, he wouldn't even have to bring the mail to me. He could keep the mail at the damn post office and I would drag that. I would go, no, baby, you don't have to deliver my mail. I will come to you and get the mail from you you don't understand and i felt the same way about this police officer and the thing is i know she's probably a good police officer i know she's good at her job but i couldn't and i can't i hate the fact that i was so blown away by how gorgeous she was and it was like i was like why i was like what do you do why would you risk getting shot you know, and this is somebody who's dedicated her life to public service. She's got stripes on her uniform. She's obviously done some great stuff. She's obviously the decorated person, you know, and I, then that thought was in my head just for a second. I was like, no, no, you don't want to be one of those pigs that just because somebody's incredibly good looking, you think they shouldn't be doing a regular person's job. That's wrong. And I was so glad that that thought just went in my, and they keep in mind, this thought was in my head in like about, about a fraction of a second. But it wasn't in the mind of the dude that was in the car in front of me. Oh, that guy was just as bad as Leah. I don't know about you. What's your, what's your name, man? Uh, that's Anthony. Yeah, it's Anthony. I'm, I'm Frank. What's going on, man? See that cop right there? I'm like, yeah. And I'm thinking he's going to be like, well, this cop did something to me. He's like, man, I've been seeing her around the neighborhood the whole time, man. Look at that ass, man. God, look at that ass. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm just going to go get me a sandwich. Nah, man. I can hold a whole second, man. You can tell me you don't want some of that ass right there. Uh, if you're asking me if she, if she's a, a beautiful lady, yeah, she's a beautiful lady. No, forget that beautiful lady stuff, man. Damn, look at that. Look at that meat. Look at that back meat on that monster. Good God almighty. I would demolish that butt. Look at that thing right there. Okay, um, that's cool. I gotta go. Oh, come on, man. Don't act like you don't like that. I, well, she, like I said, she's a lovely lady. Lovely lady. Then she turned around. And uh, at this particular time, I hadn't seen her yet. So she turns around and of course she has big breaths. Oh, my God. Look at them things. Look at the look at. the. Oh, my God. Look at them two cakes up there. She got that back meat that I like to beat. And she got them chest cakes that I likes to bake. And I'm going, this guy, this guy is not only a sexist pig, but he rhymes with sexism. This is pretty interesting, man. Mmm. And that's the, and, and I knew, and I was like, oh God, please, he already did the breast thing and the butt thing. Please don't go to the vagina. Please don't go to the, please gonna, oh man, I bet she got a vagina that I like to make mine. I'm like, okay. All right. I got to go. I, I can't, I can't deal. Come on, man. I'm like, I know, I know nowadays you gotta be, you gotta do all that stuff. You want to make the women mad and all that, but you, you, you gonna tell me, you gonna tell me right now you wouldn't like to take that home and tear it up. I said, now you're calling women it. No, I mean, I mean, I don't mean it that way. I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, come on, man. She look like an Instagram model's mama or something. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, them Instagram models be looking all good and everything, but they're kind of young for me. You know, I'm about to hit 60, but, uh, I'm saying, okay, so you're 60. So you're, are you somebody's dad? Yeah, I'm a dad. What they got to do with anything? And don't you think that maybe she's somebody's daughter? Well, I'm, I'm obviously she's somebody's daughter. So what, what, how would you feel if like, if, if like, say for the sake of argument, your daughter was over there. Yeah. And like me, a 49 year old guy who's trying to walk away from you, but you keep grabbing my arm so you can say more disgusting stuff for some reason you need me to hear it. What's your point? So what it was, 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 was two dudes, two, a middle aged guy and an old guy like you. First of all, I said, I'm almost 60. So I'm not old dude. I'm 49 and I consider myself old. I don't look old, don't feel old, but let's keep it real. That's beside. Just get to the point. Okay. I'll say that's your daughter over there, right? Yeah. And say for the sake of argument, two dudes are standing there and one of the guys sees your daughter and he's like, hey, man, look at that ass. I like to give it a good deep blast. Look at them boobs. 
I want to just think of something that rhymes with boobs and then do whatever that thing is to the breasts and the thing, her, her stuff downstairs. I want this like a, like a clothes I like to wear. So I, I'm not good at rhyming, but you get the, you know what? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right, young man. See, you called me young. I'm almost, I'm 49. You called me young. If, if I'm 49 and you do, I was 49 and you called me young, then that means you're old. Fuck you, man. Just, just get to the point. Well, the point is, dude, I mean, even I for a second, I'm trying to be more of an enlightened man. I looked at her and I went, wow, she's an incredible looking woman. I was shocked because normally you don't, normally not only do you not see a person working in a regular job, uh, that you, 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 you know, just, just, just that incredible looking. You still normally you just don't see anyone at that good looking, just walking around in general, let alone at a dangerous job. But then I thought I caught myself in my mind and I was like, dude, what are you talking about? Just because she's a, a ridiculously attractive woman doesn't mean that she's not capable of doing any kind of job that she's, she wants to do. And I, that was like in a fraction of a second in my head. You're over there talking about, what did you say about her butt? I don't remember whatever it was. It had something to do with me wanting to have sex with it. Yeah. Okay. I get the, pl- the point. But what I'm saying is, come on, man, we're older dudes, right? Right. I'm ashamed about the fact that I had that thought in my, in my mind for a second. And you just sitting there, you writing rhymes about her body parts. I mean, come on, man. You know what? You're right. You're right. I should be doing that. You know what I mean? She's somebody's daughter. You know, she's, she's a cop. You know, she's out there saving lives and all that kind of stuff. So the last thing I need to be doing is talking about, you know, the kind of stuff that, you know, I mean, I, you're right, man. You're right, brother. You're right, brother. You're right, brother. You're right. You know, I just, you know, I, mean, I, I, I'm sorry. I said, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't, you don't necessarily need to make, like, apologize to me, you know, and, uh, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I'm, you should apologize to me for keeping, I'm trying to walk away. You keep grabbing my arm and pulling me back. I mean, just, can I go now? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So I'm starting to walk away and the police officer lady drops something and bends over. And I didn't think, any, I just kind of stopped in my tracks and I went, Oh, and I was like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, I'm trying to look away. Cause I'm like, I don't, I don't, I mean, she's, she, I, I don't want her to, cause like, cause like, you know, sometimes you see something that looks so incredible. You kind of get caught and kind of freezes you and you kind of just look and you're not trying to be a pervert. Just like looking and like, Oh Jesus Christ. I just looked away real quick. And I was like, I, I cause uh, I, I, I'm trying to walk while not looking at her. And then, and then she stands up and she's, you know, I'm, 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 you know, and, and, and the guy's still, the guy's walking with me. I don't know why he's walking with me. Maybe he's going to get to me. And he's just, and then she, she, she turns around and then, and then and she walks away and he's staring at her walking away. And I know that he's staring at her walking away because I'm also staring at her walking away, but I didn't stare at her walking away as long as he stared at her walking away. And I was like, I said, she really is a lovely lady. Go, Damn, man. I'm just, Look at that thing now, boy. I know what you just said, your brother, but damn, I, I, oh my God, I'm gonna commit some crimes so she can cuff me, Jack. Cause damn, if there was some priest brutality, I got news for you. I'm all for it. She could put me, she could put me in the back of the car and beat me, beat the crap out of me with that nightstick, Jack. Cause, cause I, anything that let her touch me, I'm down with it. And then that, I don't know what he said after that, cause I, at that point, I already walked into the subway sandwich shop. And then he walked in the direction of the police officer. And then he went into, I think it was a Dunkin' Donuts or something. And then uh, she got in her car and drove away. And I don't know why, why, why are you telling me this, Steve? Why are you telling me this, Anthony? Well, I told you this because, you know, I, I just wanted to get it off my chest. I was a little shit. Now, granted, it was only a thought in my head for like a second. But um, that thought in my mind for a second was like, yeah, when somebody's like really, you've been there before. Somebody's just so smoking hot that you can't believe you're seeing them among the mortals. That's what it was like. It wasn't like I thought she was not competent at her job, but I was just shocked to see someone that incredible. Normally, when you see someone that good looking, they're singing. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like normally you, see, you normally see somebody that good looking. They're married to Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, or something like that. But uh, I, I just was, I just okay. I, I just wanted to say it because um. On the off chance that that police officer hears this podcast, uh, I just want to let you know that, you know, that brother that, that smile, that smile, you smiled at, well, outside the subway, uh, that brother was S. Anthony Thomas, well, the younger of the two, the other two, the other dude was like making rhymes about your butt and breast, and I'm the one that schooled him on not to do that. You know, he's a sexist pig. I know how to respect women. Yeah. Because I believe that women can do anything a man can do. Yeah, I believe that women should have equal pay. You damn right. 
I believe women are just as capable as men. And the fact that people even think for a second that women are not just as capable of men is insulting. And the men that think that way should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah. I want to point out that I'm 49 years old. I'm in good health. I have no sexually transmitted diseases. Never had any sexual transmitted diseases. None. I'm a non-smoker. I have no children. And I'm looking to settle down. And I'm just telling you that for no particular reason. Okay. I'm just saying. And I know that you're having a hard time finding somebody who can accept the fact that you have a demanding job. There's probably guys that are intimidated by your incredible looks and your spectacular body. But I want to let you know right now, I'm not the kind of guy that would be intimidated by a smoking hot woman with a smoking hot body. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. There's some guys out there who probably couldn't handle living with you because you probably you seem like an intelligent woman. I could tell that by the way you 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 you, you carry yourself. You're also a woman who's very, very good taste in men because you smiled at me and you nodded and you gave me a little wink and you smiled and you looked back when you walked away. Yeah, I noticed that. But I want to let you know right now, I'm the kind of guy that needs a good, strong woman. Yeah. And you the kind of woman that needs a good, strong man. And I'm a good, strong man. I can get you tickets to comedy shows, mama. you damn right. Granted, they'll be my comedy shows, but I'm damn good at it, so that's cool. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> and I'm the kind of guy that, you know, I, I would never ask you to use your position to get me out of a traffic ticket. You know why? Because I don't get traffic tickets. I'm a law-abiding man. Now, I don't know how old you are. Maybe you're too old. I mean, no, not, not too old to have children because that's not a big deal. <laughs> anyway, all I'm saying is, baby, you need a real man to be with a woman like you can handle being with a woman like you who could support a woman like you all out there with your gun and your bad saving the world. All I'm saying is you can go out and save the world, girl. But when it's time to come home, you need to come home to a real man, a man like me. You can save the world outside, but inside of closed doors, I will be your world, girl, and I'll save you. And what will I be saving you from? from suckers that ain't as much man as me. <laughs> mm. Now, granted, if you're if you're dating another police officer, uh, I just want to say right now that everything that I just said before that, if you're married to a police officer as well, everything I said before that was part of a comedy show. And I have absolutely no designs on you at all. And I would like to say to your husband, I, it's a comedy show and I, 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 the, the comedy podcast. So I have no designs on jumping on top of your incredibly delicious wife at all. But if you're single. I just want to let you know that I do have designs jumping on top of you in the most respectful way possible. Officer Awesome. Yeah. Now, to my podcast audience, I know what you're going. You're going, dude, you were doing so, you were doing a great podcast, man. And then all of a sudden, you devalue, you devalue yourself by begging some woman who might not even hear this on the off chance that you're going to get them married and jump on top of her on a regular basis. And I will have to say this to you, chumps. You didn't see her. If you saw her, you'd be like, dude, you already done 314 podcasts before this you might as well spend the whole damn 40 something minutes of your normal podcast you should just spend the whole time extolling her virtues and extolling your virtues because she is definitely worth taking a whole damn podcast episode and talking about how awesome she is so i just want to say one thing to you officer awesome s anthony's available oh yeah <laughs> anyway uh folks uh <laughs> This has been episode number 315 of the S. Anthony Says Podcast. I want to thank you guys, you weird bastards, for checking out this podcast, especially you also, Sir Awesome, because I'm single and disease-free and looking this little down. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> F y'all, I got to get what I need to get. Screw y'all. I don't have a girlfriend right now, okay? I'm trying to find a woman. Shut up. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, this podcast is uh, the Yes Anthony Says Podcast, episode number 315. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Do me a favor, my friends. Uh, if you want to email yours truly, the Mr. Thomas, that would be me. There's only one email address. I have one, and it's the only one I have, and it's the only one that's going to come to me because it's the only one I have. And here it is. It's talk to S Anthony at gmail.com. T A L K T O. S A N T H O N Y at gmail.com. This podcast is on Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, iTunes, and of course the home base is Podbean. I have a YouTube channel that I'm beginning to use now. Do me a favor, you bastards. Go to YouTube and look up S Anthony Says and subscribe to my YouTube channel, damn it. Social media. I'm on in, I'm on Twitter in two places for me as Anthony. It's at S Anthony Thomas for this show. The S Anthony says podcast is at S Anthony says Facebook. Yes. I'm on Facebook. You bastards go to Facebook, look and go into the search box and type in S Anthony says, and you will see my verified page. You bastards like the page, like the page, click the like, click the like, click the like. And I'm on Instagram at, at S. Anthony Thomas. Folks, much love to every last one of you in the Bastion Army. I got love for you. You got love for me. We got love for each other. Let's squeeze each other's butts. Wow, that got weird. <laughs> Y'all can just squeeze my butt. <laughs> I'm not changing that. That's what I would like. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> Folks. Much love to you all. And thank you very much, sincerely, for, for, for sticking with me for all this time. And for the new people that have come on in, in, in nice numbers, thank you very much. Much love to you all. And thank you for joining the Bastard Army. Folks, I am now going to say goodbye to you the way I always say goodbye. And the long-time listeners know what I'm talking about. I'm going to do it on the count of three. Are you going to do it with me? Yes, of course you will. Are you ready? One, two, three. S. Anthony. Out.